Welcome to Life as Usual, a video blog dedicated to making you a more impactful leader through the ideas of self-awareness, execution, and direction. Today, I want to talk about two things that are critical for you to, as a leader. One, the concept of wet wood not burning. And two, your job as a leader is to provide air cover. These two metaphors can cover a lot of ground that will help you communicate to the people that you're leading and also satisfying the projects you're trying to achieve. As a leader, it gets hard to get people to get things done, especially when you're wondering when you give them all the things they need and they seem to not be able to get to the next step. Chances are it's some wet wood or some air cover that needs to be had. This one really bit me because especially in early in my career, I would always just give people the facts. Why don't they ever get something done when I just give them the facts? Is it me? Is it something I'm doing? Or is it, is, is it because I'm young? I used to work in a very older industry. So, you know, being a team lead while being in my 20s made me very insecure. Then I realized, generally none of those things. It was probably somebody overburdened by the work that they were also doing or overburdened by another person in my team that was a lead. They had them doing something else. And I didn't have the conversations with those people to give them the space they needed to get my thing done. Or I didn't move that thing from that person to someone else that might not have been as busy. What do I mean by those two concepts? The concept of wet wood not burning is simple. When you're camping, one of the first things they tell you is that wet wood can't burn. What that means is wood works as a burning agent. We all know that. You want to go and you want to go find wood. But the moment that water touches that wood, it loses a majority of its effectiveness. Either you need to dry that wood out for it to burn or you need to go find some dry wood. For leadership, that concept is simple. That means when somebody has forces that stops them from being effective, they're going to need more than just the goals and tools to get something done. They're gonna to have to dry out. You're gonna to have to get those things off of them or you're gonna to have to move that task to someone else. What do I mean by air cover? In the military, air cover means that the airs are safe. There are no other planes trying to attack the team on the ground. In leadership, this means that there's a boss or a head of some other department stopping things from happening. Your job as a leader is to clear the skies so that those other planes, in this case, other leaders, aren't stopping your team from making things happen. So how does this look in the real world? What this looks like is a three-dimensional look at somebody's work day. Not to get too academic, but Leaders have to be masters at resource allocation. And this helps you have the tools to look at a problem from not just do they have the cycles in their calendar, do they have the emotional cycles and is the political will there to make something happen? When you don't do this, you'll end up wasting a lot of time and money. Not just money for the company, but also people's hours and what they're trying to do. What does this do for a leader? What this does for a leader is it gives them more empathy into what they're doing for the team and also the cost of getting something done. Seldom is the cost of getting something done talked about because it's one of the most painful parts of the process. Being proactive about what do things actually mean and how much they're actually worth gives you a lot clearer vision on trying to get a goal accomplished. And for a leader, that's key. How do you provide the right air cover and make sure that the wood isn't wet through the lens of self-awareness, execution, and direction? Self-awareness. One, you gotta be aware that wood gets wet. It sounds simple and it sounds obvious. However, most of the time we don't really consider as leaders how much work someone has. We just look at the end result and say, that has to get done. We also don't take a look at the emotional effect because we've been taught either you get things done or you don't. We take what is a three-dimensional idea 
and turn it into two-dimensional binary yes or no. Eventually, when teams push hard, they end up losing people. And one of the biggest reasons why people churn out of companies and out of teams is leadership. Also, you want to be aware of air cover. Politics matter. As Tom Peters says, as a leader, as a change maker, as somebody that desires to be impactful, politics is life. We can ignore it as much as we want, but there's no getting out of it. So for understanding that concept and the fact that there need to be political battles fought for the things that you find that matter to happen, you have to be good at that. And you have to make sure that your team has the space to make that happen. So you have to be aware of politics and you have to be aware that wet wood gets heavy and it dies. How do you execute on this? One, in terms of wet wood, you have to make an objective decision on what wet wood is. So I would take some time and think, where do you want people to be in terms of executing things? How many hours do you want them focused on things? Where should their emotional state be? Dig deep here and make somewhat an objective way. The reason why you want to write this down is because if it's measured, then you can start to adjust and find the right cadence for your team. After that, you want to have conversations with your team and people inside of it. You want to find out where people are on your scale. Is it wet wood? Is it not? If they are quote unquote wet wood, then you need to make a change in what they're doing. You need to pull things that are important out of their workflow. And if they have nothing to do and they're bored, some people are, you need to add some more weight to them. In terms of air cover, you need to have conversations with the people that are leaders in your organization, tastemakers, and whoever that moves the needle at your place of work. Sometimes it's people with titles and sometimes it isn't. One of the most powerful people at my last job was someone in a cubicle that had no title, but not a single decision went by without his input. You need to find the people like that in your organization and have a cadence with them. Talk with them, understand what's important, have an understanding of how you can maneuver your goals to align with theirs. In terms of direction, you need to make sure people know that you don't want them overburdened. A lot of people have worked in places with bosses that just look at them as resources. They just look at them as a number. The reason why this is important to your team, again, is the fact that you're pulling a two-dimensional binary decision of yes and no into the world of reality, which has a lot of inputs. They need to know that you care. So make a determination of what sweat wood and what air cover you need. And make sure people know that you're out to make sure that they have that. These things really work well as two-way conversations. So you have to make it that way. If you found this topic of leadership interesting, take a look in the description box and you'll find a couple of books that have helped my understanding of how to become a better leader and some of the pitfalls that I've found across the way. Especially when it comes to leadership, this is not a one-way conversation. I'm not just talking to you. And this isn't just a two-way conversation. You're not just talking to me and I'm talking to you. This is actually a conversation amongst the tribe of leaders. That can't start without you injecting some opinion or idea in the comment box below. Talk about some of your own personal stories and help engage all of us into learning how to be a better leader from you. I'm not the only teacher, I'm also a student.